Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Upper Bound Math and Science Show, otherwise known as UBMS Live. And I'm your host, Hector. And I am Benagabi. UBMS is a program that helps uh, afflict kids with um, co career paths in math and science and so help them go on their path. And we are joined today with our amazing guests, JC Kwong and Laura Nooney. Welcome today. Thank you. Uh, Thank we you. wanted to ask them and discuss about their uh, career paths and learn more about what they do with media, VR, and AR, and the new technologies of our generations and how they learn through that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to start by asking you like, about your career paths. Like, what started you on your career path specifically? Well, I, my very first uh, work in um, digital was actually writing quiz questions for a kid's uh, literacy game called Chicken Stacker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that was the, my humble beginnings. Uh, JC? Uh, so my uh, trajectory to this, I'm a, a VR and AR market researcher. Mm -hmm. I'm a, mm -hmm. I do analysis. And uh, immediately after I uh, left grad school, where I initially thought I was going to be a professor, I decided um, I, I didn't want to go into academia anymore, which is a very important takeaway. You know, if you find you're, you don't like doing something, then you should uh, reevaluate. But anyway, I, I came to Boston and started going to a bunch of uh, technology networking events because I'm really into VRAR and technology in general. Uh, and then I eventually land in the, the role I'm in now after doing some, you know, contract work, doing uh, writing articles and, and that sort of thing. Mm. So you guys are obviously older than us. So when you guys were um, kids, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you guys were kids or like in high school, middle school, were there any hobbies? Were you interested in anything that led to your career path as it is now? Um, I, uh, I like to write. And uh, when I was a little kid, I submitted a poem to um, Cricket Magazine. It was not accepted. <laughs> um, but I, I was, I've always been interested in writing and um, in anything creative. So I was always pursuing that, whether it was theater or ceramics or um, I don't know. I even sang in the musicals and those are not, not very, very well. So, um, so that that. But I don't know that that was what got me into media per se. I think it was really almost happenstance, like I said, where I uh, was asked to write some quiz questions because I was a, could write and uh, and went from there and um, moved into the digital world of um, Zoom, and uh, which was a kids' show where kids would write in ideas. It was, it was a STEM curriculum, um, and I would um, choose which ideas we posted online and that sort of thing, and then my career grew from there. So it was a little bit, I would say the trajectory was not linear. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm obviously nowhere near as creative as, <laughs> as Laura, but uh, when I was younger, I remember being, you know, even then deeply into technology. I always uh, read up on, you know, the latest uh, phones, cameras, game consoles, <laughs> uh, anything like that was uh, always fascinating to me. And I would just uh, spend hours looking over, like, uh, spec sheets and, and comparing one to the other, which is kind of what I do now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, d doing all that from a, a very young age and actually, you know, uh, putting things down on paper in terms of what I thought about specific technologies, I think, was uh, super helpful, even if it didn't uh, uh, necessarily leave like my middle school notebooks. Yeah, it was. I can tell it was a lot of trial and error for you guys, like yep. learning and then gaining experience from that. And I just wanted to know the steps that it took you guys to get to the position you got to, as you are right now being able to even interact with us and teach us a lot more about it. So how was that for you guys? Well, I, I just, yeah. I, went to, I went to college with a typewriter. <laughs> like, so, yeah. You know, so media, there, there, was, there was no, again, there was no direct path because media as it existed when I, um, was growing up was sort of the traditional television program or 
radio stations. There, there wasn't the sort of ability to customize and pick and choose what you did. So I, I grew up in a very different world. And my path really, like, like I said before, was I sort of wrote these quiz questions. And then I, I moved into um, producing uh, kids games, educational games, based on the curricula from the television shows at WGBH, mm -hmm. um, and learned about how to engage kids um, in, um, in a learning experience while, you know, engaging them also in sort of a more emotional way. So it was, it was uh, a long, a lot of trial and error there, but I kind of, again, the, the career that I ended up with didn't exist hmm. at all, then, you know, and, and that, I think that's really important to know that you guys are earnestly talking about AR and VR, but when you are in the middles of your career, it's probably going to be working on things that we haven't conceived of just yet, or mm. that you know are really. So that's just something I would I would keep in mind. Yeah, that that actually I'll, to that point, uh, I think it's critically important you know to familiarize yourself with this stuff as it comes along. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, to to usually to be to be an analyst and to work at like a big market research firm. Uh, you usually have to be uh, a bit older, a bit more seasoned, and usually you come from uh, a, a position, a job that is in the field that you're analyzing. Um, the reason I got to be uh, where I am is because, you know, uh, very early on when I was in school, I, I took advantage of uh, the resources that they had around. You know, at, uh, when I went to grad school, there was uh, VR classes and a VR lab, and it was uh, a lot less sophisticated than where we are now because it was obviously just getting started. Uh, but even then, you know, I, I got tons of experience with, uh, for example, shooting 360 cameras and uh, oh, using wow. drones for, for photogrammetry. And you, is, you, had this access, you have access to this when you're in college? I yeah, suppose. yeah. Um, and, you know, basically that experience uh, gave me a lot of knowledge that, you know, people didn't really have at that time because mm -hmm. not everybody was, was messing around with this stuff. That's true. So, um... <coughs> How did VR connect with your passion? Because in this world, there's a lot of things connect. They don't have to be like the same, but they connect in one way or another. How did VR like connect with your passion and what you guys like to do? Especially with media. Yeah, I. So my passion is education, mm -hmm. and uh, that was from my years of experience creating these learning, you know, interactions and learning environment. Um, games and and I what I saw in VR and when I was I was uh, on the board at Brooklyn Interactive Group and the executive director and I were kind of looking at where where we needed to take the organization and um, what made the most sense we've we've generally uh, community media centers like this one have been very much about traditional forms of media making but we both felt like you know, if our mission is to support all kinds of media making, let's look and see what we think is is possible. So, for me, um, when I went to a bunch of conferences several years ago to kind of look at what I saw there, and I and I felt like there is great potential with VR in particular, but also with AR in education, and that's my particular passion and interest. Where, just like almost like we talked about a 3D printer. A VR allows for you to, so a, VR, a 3D printer allows you to touch and physically handle things that you may not be able to in real life. So you could create a, a nucleus of a cell or you could create, you know, whatever different objects that you wouldn't be able to touch in real life. VR, you can put people in environments that are too far away, too cold, not safe, too hot, too big, too small to be in. And, and, and being in that environment, I think, creates real engagement with, with the subject matter. Because I think there's, a, there's something about the sensation of being somewhere and that uh, ability to feel really engaged with the subject that sort of allows you to take in more learning. That's, that's my belief. Absolutely. And that, that, that idea of using VR and AR to uh, create these really visceral, really uh, kinesthetically engaging yeah. experiences, yeah. right? 
um, it doesn't is not limited to to just education. Like it mm -hmm. goes far right. beyond into you know business applications, which is more where where I work. You know, companies mm -hmm. come to us when they uh, want to know about uh, how VR can help them enhance their training processes, right? Uh, and it's been pretty successful at that so far. You know, uh, lots of major companies are starting to see the value of uh, creating uh, VR and AR experiences that can, uh, for example take somebody uh, directly to an assembly line or uh, show somebody exactly how, uh, for example, a piece of new medical equipment would look inside a hospital without you know, physically being there or, or moving any equipment. Um, I think, you know, for my part, uh, VR and AR obviously is a, a huge part of what I do, but it's also uh, really interesting to see how uh, people are, are starting to think about this technology as um, a new way basically to do computing like the, the regular stuff we do on phones or on computers today uh, we could eventually do in, in VR and AR and it's very like amazing to see how as we know you guys are much older the technology that was introduced to you guys was something you guys had to like learn through while for us for me and him we grew up with that technology mm -hmm. so we're not we're not very foreign to it. However, like you said, you went to college with a typewriter. <laughs> How are you very interested in technology? But I don't believe until you, you hit college that you were exposed to stuff like right. that. Mm -hmm. So as like you learn through it, your education through it, like the struggles that you face with VR and not only for you guys, but for like, well, your careers in general, like what were the struggles with that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, I think about technology of any kind. It's a tool, right? It's a tool, just like your pens are a tool. This this cup is a tool. It, it allows you to do something more easily, right? I think that that's really the definition of technology. We think of it as high tech, but anything around you is really tech, not paper. Um, so. And, and you learn to use those tools because they're going to make something you're trying to do easier. Um, so with technology in my life and in my professional life, it was, it's more about using it and learning it in the service of something else, mm -hmm. right? Uh, like in, what role it could fill? Hmm? Like what role it could fill? How is it going to help me do the thing that I need to do or want to do mm -hmm. more easily? How is it going to enhance my experience? You know, in terms of gaming, you know, does it create a more uh, this really compelling experience so I'm going to enjoy my game more I'm going to be more interested in being a part of it or you know for um, so any uh, or, or does it make my job easier you know like anything that's that's all that you you pick up what you need to pick up and that's actually the true about learning anything right mm -hmm. if you have a goal that you want to to reach and you feel passionate about that goal or just very curious or interested, all the things that you need to learn to reach that goal, you're just gonna pick up, right? That's so that's the same as, that's true with technology or it's true with physics. You know, I, I, I don't think there's really any difference. Yeah, absolutely, I, I would agree with that. And I think, in, it, to your point, the, this idea of like, uh, us struggling with technology, you know, I think it's, Laura's absolutely right, you just have to, you know, buckle down and, and decide uh, what new technologies or what new knowledge uh, is going to be most valuable to you uh, in, the, in, the, in the short term or in the long term. Um, I think, though, if you, if you want to talk about like, the uh, struggles of like, you know, the entire technology field in general, <laughs> uh, there's definitely a lot to talk about. I mean, uh, we, we know of some examples of like, uh, VR and AR that's like, right now available to, to regular folks like us, you know, like a, a PlayStation VR headset or the, the AR lenses on uh, an app like Snapchat or, or Instagram. That stuff's pretty good. It's uh, extremely low cost or free in a lot of cases. Uh, and it's, you know, it brings a lot of value to people because it has really clearly defined use cases. It only does the one thing. It's very accessible too. Yeah, exactly. It's extremely accessible. Um, but there's still, I think, a lot of room for, for the industry to, to grow and improve. You know, for example, I think one of the goals that uh, <coughs> the industry is trying to get to, and you'll, you'll 
hear more about this the more you learn about this industry is that we're trying to get to things like AR glasses. Like eventually your glasses are going to show you like the weather or uh, your co-host's uh, Facebook profile. Uh, yeah. That's old people. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. My bad. TikTok. Um, but, you know, in order to get that, there's still so many challenges we have to deal with in terms of uh, display technology. How do you power a device like that? How do you, uh, you know, get people okay with the idea of having even more cameras on their face at all times? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's uh, a lot of exciting challenges, uh, I think, that uh, you guys are going to encounter very soon. Mm. So, uh, you said your passion was education and so how do you think um, VR and AR will connect with education? Would it help like boost the more educa like boost education? Would it help like the youth be more engaged with school? Like, how do you, you think know, that? I think that that argument has been made about a lot of things. Like when TV verse came in and they would wheel in the VR card and uh, not or the, computer. yeah, you know, like there was this idea that it was going to be the the thing that would fix education, and I actually don't believe that. But what I do believe is that the thing that makes something interesting to learn is one's personal engagement in it, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, like I was saying a little bit earlier, like if, if you have something that you're curious about, then you're, whatever you need to learn to get to learn that thing or to achieve that goal, you're going to make. So I, I think that... Um, VR has the potential to pique curiosity or to create a sense of, uh, there's this belief that there's a sensation of real empathy when you are in an interactive virtual reality environment where you, you feel like you're there. And so what, what, you know, the question is, if that's the case, what might that help a person learn? What might that sensation be useful in getting across? I mean, I don't, I don't think that's really been plumbed or discovered fully yet. So I do think there's potential, but I don't think it's going to solve education. Again, it's a tool that can be used in the service of education. And I think there's potential there because um, it, it's, again, it's affordance. It allows us to explore things that we can't necessarily explore, you know, physically. physically. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, to to that point, uh, I'm gonna tell a, a little story about uh, a you know a teacher who was uh, working with VR uh, at a conference. She had a presentation where she was saying uh, that she had implemented VR in the classroom, uh, but you know, contrary to the usual example that, that people show you, which is like you know, 22 kids lined up and each one has their own headset, and they're all just like, <laughs> whatever. Like that's cool. Uh, and that's certainly one way to, to do VR, if that's the way you want to go. But mm -hmm. uh, her approach was very different. She had one headset uh, you, you know, in an experience where uh, they were exploring a, a molecule or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and she put one of the kids in the headset, went through the experience. Uh, the kid came out of the experience and immediately started recounting the entire experience to uh, his or her classmates. So, you know, saying like in perfect detail, like, oh, so I uh, touched the hydrogen uh, atom and, and then it did this and then it did that. So uh, immediately her takeaway was there's a huge amount of recall in terms of like, you know, the content. It's, it's way more engaged. Like this kid wouldn't have had such a, a fun experience. It wouldn't have been able to share all this with the, uh, their other classmates. Well, was it for VR? Yeah, it exactly. Like on the boy, you know? Exactly. Or, or if it was in a book, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or even a, a, a video, you know. There's this is a, a, another level up from from any of that stuff. And we know that like VR was used a lot and is used a lot for interactivity, uh, especially for gaming. We know that the PS4 VR it's a uh, it's a product that has been selling a lot recently. I know that JC would know a lot about that. So, <laughs> how much farther do you believe that? the interactivity of AR and VR will go to, like, at what point will we be able to not only, like, move the molecule, the hydrogen molecule, but be able to feel it? Mm. So I had a very interesting experience. I was at the Tribeca Film Festival uh, several years ago, and, and um, there was 
um, someone there that had um, it was an art piece where you could experience somebody's death. Oh wow! And oh, and wow. I, I, you could extreme. choose JFK or Whitney Houston. JFK. I chose Whitney. Oh. Um, and what it was is you would go into this sort of morgue box, and it was a sensory deprivation, mm -hmm. and and you experienced it with sound and smell. And so they, I, he, this guy that was I talked to much afterwards was a, a smell designer. Um, and I thought that was really fascinating because when you combine, I think that you'll be able to combine a designed release of smell mm -hmm. with the sights and sounds of VR, your brain fills in. You know, when you talk on the phone, your brain is filling in a whole bunch of stuff that isn't there, right? Mm -hmm. So when you experience VR, your brain is filling in experiences in that that sensation so if you're adding other things for your senses like smell and sound it's like you're it's <laughs> we are just biological creatures and our brains will fill in and we will have the real feeling of whatever it is that we're doing i think that's absolutely as that's that that's inevitable i think and 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 kind of exciting kind of scary yeah. But, yeah, but i think it's really you could do you know use your powers for good not evil yeah. but i think i think that uh it could be super interesting right like mm -hmm. how would you, what kind of experience would you create but i i do think that that's i believe it'd be like experiences that we wouldn't usually have the opportunity of in a life that we live now sure so like mm -hmm. with game especially with gaming gaming is i feel like from what I've been exposed to, very relevant to VR, how mm -hmm. you can live uh, or you can experience something that you wouldn't normally do. Mm -hmm. And just wanted to see how you feel like that would advance. What's interesting about uh, VR and AR is this idea of like mediation, mm -hmm. right? Which is the idea of uh, there is something between you, the user, and what you're experiencing, whether that's like VR content, AR content, whatever. Um, you can go out right. You can go on the internet right now and buy a two thousand dollar bodysuit that has climate control, so you can map to feel like different temperatures depending on the thing that you're in. Uh, it'll give you haptic feedback, like if you get hit with a gun, it'll punch you. Uh, it'll punch you? Yeah, it'll you know, like you, actuate the motors. <laughs> you can buy uh, these really expensive gloves that will pull back on your fingers to give you the impression that you are holding something or gripping something. Wow. Uh, all that stuff is solved right now uh, for, for, you know, uh, at the experimental level. I don't think you're going to buy one at Best Buy anytime no. soon. <laughs> uh, but even more than that, uh, mediation in, in VR and AR allows you to do things that, you know, in, there, we've talked about experiences that very few people get to have. There's also experiences that nobody gets to have, mm. com things completely outside of reality. So there's this one company that's making a, an AR headset right now, and one of the things they've uh, released as a demo is a virtual human. So you, you guys know that uh, you know, you can tell your phone like, "Hey Siri," and talk oh, to it, and yeah, it has hey, a. Google. It but can, we know that like that was someone else who recorded it. <laughs> right, it, uh, but it can kind of talk to you, and not all the stuff is recorded. The the voice is synthetic. Yeah, you know, yeah. things are generated by AI. This human uh, can also talk to you, and because uh, you're wearing something on your head, uh, it can also look at you. Oh. Uh, the headset has eye tracking, so it can literally meet your gaze, and okay. you can tell it to That's do like things. That's like uncanny valley. Yeah, it's, it's kind of uncanny, but it's you know, this is a, a human that doesn't exist and has never existed, uh, but it's something that can like sort of be be realistic. So uh, there's a, there's a lot there to to think about. That's true. That's true. Especially like for VR, like I feel like it can like help people. Like for example, like who can't travel. Like they can like put on a VR set and like go to Puerto Rico, go to like Honduras, like go to like their homeland and like see what it's like and like there's a lot of things. So I feel like that will get more people interested in VR and like AR. So like, what advice would you offer for people who want to like go into that field? Well, I again, I you know I went to school with none of this technology. I know you got that earlier. Funny. Um, <laughs> but but I really think that the careers that you're likely to have don't exist right now. 
And so I think that the things that are most important to learn are learning how to learn, right? And pursuing curiosity and creative problem solving. I think one of the most important things is communication, and that means your English classes. Because you have to be able to write about your ideas. You have to be write, able to write about your innovations and your discoveries. Because mm -hmm. if you can't communicate clearly about them, no one's going to know about them. And there won't be the interest. So that the ability to communicate with other people is, I think, one of the most important skills that you can focus on learning. Because eventually, you, I don't know you'll be able to keep up with technology, but you will be able to learn those things as they come up. Mm -hmm. Are you guys learning languages at all right now? Uh, French, 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 Latin. French, French and Latin? I speak <laughs> English, obviously, and <laughs> Spanish at yeah. home. And I speak Swahili. Oh. I don't know if you know what yeah. that is. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I, I have another language that you guys uh, might want to try. It's called JavaScript. Oh, uh, coding? <laughs> isn't that where you used to like, hack and stuff? Yeah. Oh, so that's, yeah I, I think, very, you know, you, you want to stay, it's one of the easiest ways, I think, to stay literate oh. in technology. Oh. In they, technology? Yeah, because people are going to, that's the language that you're going to use to talk about technology no matter what. So is this, is this script, this language, <laughs> like, like used in almost everything? Uh, there's, there's a bunch of different languages. So oh, there's yeah, probably yeah. as many programming languages as there are regular languages. Oh, wow. So just pick one you like. Yeah. But that takes a lot of, like, <laughs> effort. Not mm. effort, but, like, <laughs> years of, like, training and all that. Yeah. So. Uh, another question I want to ask you guys, like, what do you guys think will be capable, like, the, what do you think the jobs that we'll be able to have mm. by the time we're, like, your age? <laughs> you make it sound old. old. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, well, I love it. Like, we, like, like I said before, you guys were exposed to this technology a lot later in your lives. So you said, so you said uh, that there will be a lot more opportunities in this technology and these technologies later. So what do you believe those technologies, how, what do you believe they will become, the things that we'll be able to do? Well, I think that we have to think about, again, like I, I've said earlier, that technology is a tool. So when you're thinking about that, when you're you know, making predictions as a futurist, which you're asking us to do, uh, the, you, know, you have to really think about reality now and then flip it on its head and say, well, what is the opposite of all that? And is that possible? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that that's, that's, that's the exercise in imagining what's possible and what the future might hold for any particular technology or for any particular situation or anything that you might want to change mm -hmm. is to just imagine that. So I'm sort of putting that back on you guys yeah. to actually yeah. imagine that. Because I do think that Again, it's about what problems are you going to want to be solving? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of problems to solve, right? Right, right. So think about that. And then how would those problems, the current situation, what if it were the opposite of it is now? And then what might facilitate that opposite? And is that something you want? I mean, that's how you move your way into the future and into innovation, I believe. Yeah, definitely. I think. One of the most important lessons I've, I've ever heard, it was at a, a presentation recently here in Boston, uh, was somebody who was talking about like uh, all these uh, really amazing predictions that were made in like science fiction, for example. Like mm -hmm. people are saying like, oh, as far back as like the 60s, Star Trek knew we were going to have like smartphones. Man, they had them all the way back then. Uh, and you know, even earlier, like. H.G. Wells novels mm -hmm. were talking about like personal computers and you'd be able to communicate across vast distances and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's really important to think about it like this. I don't think that H.G. Wells and all these guys were psychic, that they could literally see into the future and see where we're going to have smartphones and stuff. Mm -hmm. But rather, uh, when those visions of like the future uh, enter into the public consciousness, when we all like read these books, see these movies, see these things that are possible, uh, we want to go and make it a reality. We just want to yeah. go out and build it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why we have, a, what, that's why we are what we are. It's very inspiring. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Like, today, I learned a lot personally. I hope the audience learned a lot too. Thank you for giving us your insight and all the things like, I'll hope you guys need to write a book so I can read more about it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I'll be waiting for your book. <laughs> but we just wanted to thank you. We have a lot to take out of this. But 
Uh, that's all the time we have today, folks. Uh, I just want to thank my crew, my crew, our crew, for our making crew. this production possible. Uh, let me name them real quick. Uh, Michaela, Loani, Angel, Lamia, Victoria, <laughs> Amy, <laughs> and Dariela, she's right over there. Uh, Eric, Mike, and Alex. Thank I want to you. Thank all of you. And have <laughs> that, that camera right there. <laughs> Bye.